and welcome to Trials to Triumphs. I'm Ashley Blaine Featherson Jenkins, but you can call me ABFJ. This week, my good friend, singer, and actress, Amber P. Riley, tells me what life ingredients she has needed to simply be content. Ingredient number one, authentic friendships. Who, Lord knows I can relate. The deeper I dive into this podcast, the more I discover just how profound the relationships I forge in my life have been, how much they've shaped my path. The people around me, my friends, family, even the people who I get a quick text from every now and then, they fill my cup and inspire me to keep moving forward. And Amber knows all about the give and take of relationships. She has such a rare authenticity in all things, her pursuits, her relationships with her Glee family, and finding her purpose because of those relationships. She was like, I didn't deserve your friendship years ago. But she said, you know what, out of the blue, even though I was like, she kind of like to the left of me, like disappeared. She said out of the blue one day, you called me and was like, hey, I just thought about you and I just wanted to say I love you. And, um, I hope that you're doing okay. I didn't want to bother you. I just want to call you and say that. And she she said that moment saved her life. Mm. That somebody, somebody that she hadn't talked to, that she wasn't doing anything for, cared about her. And it let her feel valuable. Amber's role as Mercedes and Glee gave the musical theater nerd in me a blueprint and forged this beautiful sense of possibility and contentment that is so, so necessary in Hollywood. In a world that constantly demands so much from us all, Amber doubles down on finding peace with who and where she is right now. And in our Sankofa moment, Amber brings back one person from history to show the beautiful progress the Black community has made. I would love to walk around with him and just be like, look, look at these, this movement. Look at social media. Look at the Supreme Court. Ah, Amber P. Riley. Hi. <laughs> hi, Bruce. Amber. Hi. <laughs> I just love you. Amber, first of all, welcome to Trials to Triumphs. I'm so happy Thank you're here. Thank you for having me. All right. I want you to tell the story of how we met. I want to hear it from your perspective. <laughs> oh, we met on the set of Glee. Yes. I just remember you being very just lovely and we had like great conversations. And honestly, it was nice to be on set with like a black woman, you know, and spend that much time mm-hmm. with a black wo- woman because it was a, just a very Caucasian set. God bless them. Love the ca- Caucasians. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, you know, <laughs> there is something about, you know, uh, having a shared experience with someone that looks like you. Well, I mean, Amber, here's the thing. Ah, Glee. Okay, so Glee was the turning point for me in my career because it was my first guest star booking, and it was supposed to be uh, a recurring guest star. I remember being like, this is supposed to recur, and and I was cast Mm -hmm. as one of your best friends, like one of your best friends kind of coming and visiting, and, you know, at that time, I was a huge fan of yours. I was a huge... Glee was like my dream show was like, I'm an actor, I'm a singer, I'm a dancer. I can put my musical theater degree to use. And so when the opportunity came up to audition, I was like, God, this is it. And when I booked it and got to go to New York, it was like my first like glitzy type of job. And it really felt like I, it was an early representation of like my manifestation power of like, I yeah. really put that into the universe. And it was even bigger than what I imagined. But one of the best parts I realized, it's so funny, going into it, I was just so excited that I was going to be able to sing and dance and whatever. But in retrospect, the best part was you. That's why I went there. That, it was so that we could become friends and we could, and it's, I'll never forget, you said to me, you were like, I just want you to know, I don't do this. This isn't normal for me. You're like, I don't typically just like make friends with people that come on the show. So I must really like you, girl, because I ain't never done this before. And I felt so honored. I was like, well, thank you for loving me, Amber. (laughs) I'm so glad that I've grown up and got a little bit more tact. Who says that to people? (laughs) I mean, in a couple of years, we'll be celebrating a decade of being Mm -hmm. friends. And you truly, 
have been there for me and I've been there for you ever since we met. And I'm so grateful yeah. you're in my life. I really I'm am. Grateful you're, I'm grateful you're in my life because you're definitely one of the most genuine people that I've ever met. And especially that's very, you know, it's very hard in this industry. Here's the here's the tea, though, about you, Amber. You're one of the most L.A. people I know. And what I mean by that is you are so, like, fly and, like, there's a, there's a casual vibe to you. There's, like, a, there's a, it's a homegirl quality. It's, like, mm-hmm. if you meet you, you're just, you, you're just the homegirl. You're the homie. You, <laughs> you, I feel like you share yourself with the world in that way. That's why I think people are so attracted to you is because mm-hmm. I appreciate that you called me so genuine, but you were the exact same. Thank you. The thing about Amber is she keeps it a buck all the time. You're the most keeping it real person I know. If you, if you want to <laughs> hear the truth, come to you. Um, and so it's true. You're laughing because you know, you know, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to hear about LA. So what did LA teach you? You know, I think the the one thing about LA is we're super laid back. Like we're just really super chill. And I don't know if it's because of the weather. I don't know if because we got the best weed in the US. I don't know. I don't know if it's the beachy vibes. Like, I don't know what it is, but I've just always been super, like, laid back, super chill. Even the way we dress out here, like, you can go out some places and people will have on, like, track suits. And it's, like, a nice restaurant. Nobody's really tripping. Like, it's, I didn't realize that it, we were like that until I started living other places. And I was like, I dress down all the time. Like, I rarely wear heels. I'm always in some ones. Like, um, but I think that L.A. pretty much taught me to to be myself in, 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 I'll put it in context of being in Hollywood. Like the fact that this is my business because I'm actually from here. I realized that Hollywood is really more of a state of mind than a place. And mm. I think LA has, is, is like grounding for me. I think it's just became grounding because I know what LA really is because I'm from here. Ooh. Ooh, so that's kind of like a gift. It's almost like a little bit of a gift. It's like you're able to see through the mirage because Mm -hmm. you're like, this is just home for me. Like, I know that y'all are kind of caught up in the glitz and glamour, but I'm just at home in my ones, hanging out with my family at the the cookout. But I realize that I'm lucky in that way because when people move here and they don't, you, you're not lucky enough to really find family because it can be hard because Hollywood can be, I understand when people say LA is fake and all this other kind of stuff. Like I get where they're coming from, but that's you. They're usually in this industry. They're usually in, 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 in Hollywood is a facade. It's not, it's not real. Take me to pre glee. Okay. Mm-hmm. I heard, I read and I, I'm, I'm, flabbergasted by this, that you were turned down from American Idol I at was. 17. Are they I insane? Was. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, so walk me through that and take me to what your life was like right before you get cast on Glee. So I think the year that I auditioned, I feel like Fantasia had won that year or the year Mm. prior. I Mm. think she won the year. No, she had won the year prior and that made me want to audition. And, you know, I kind of told my parents and I didn't do the LA audition because the LA audition was nuts. Like it was super crazy. So I drove to the San Francisco one. So me and my family got in, we got in our little Volkswagen, our little station wagon. (laughs) Oh, this story. And we drove all the way to San Francisco. And I just knew. I was like, this is it. This is the new way to get in the industry. There's no other way, you know, to to really do it. And I wasn't 17. I, I think I was like 19. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I definitely was out of high school by this point. 
and, you know, did the audition and made it through the preliminary. Because, you know, there's different, I think people think you go straight into, like, the judges. You don't. You go through, like, all these producers and all this kind of stuff. What did you say? Oh, God, I can't, I can't, I think that I sang Sweet Thing. Mmm. Mmm. I don't remember. I really don't remember. I, I think it was a Shaka Khan song. And um, um, I think that's what I sang. And made it, I think I made it through that first one and then went to the second producers and like, it was like a no. And I was legitimately devastated. And um, I, my, I remember my mom really didn't want me to go because I feel like she knew that I was probably not mentally prepared for that kind of rejection. Because it really did, like, it crushed me. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't think that I could sing after that. And um, maybe, I think maybe three years later is when I booked Glee. Because after that, I was just like, I'm going to sing whenever somebody asks me to sing. Like, I just didn't take it seriously. I, 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 I did a bunch of open mics after that and, like, tried to do shows and really tried, put put boots on the ground to become, like, an artist and it just wasn't nothing was really moving every everything that looked like an opportunity ended up being a dead end and so a girl I just got a job at Ikea <laughs> and yes. started like, started working at Ikea customer service actually really liked it um it was a very like foundational step for me because I had to learn how to deal with people and different personalities and like bite my tongue uh, <laughs> not fight or cuss people out like i had to it was some character development some character mm. development um mm. so soon after that like you know my mom it was my mom was like you don't really sing anymore i don't really see you doing blah 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 and I was like, well, you know, it, I just don't know if it's for me. And she was like, you know, you really should go after your dreams. I just see you working now. And like, this is not, she She just didn't want me to like end up hating my life because I didn't really go for it. Or squandering your dreams. She didn't want you to squander your dreams. Yeah. yeah. And so I ended up quitting my job and I'm not telling people to quit their job. Okay. I worked there for two years and I was really unhappy and I didn't realize that I was so unhappy. I just felt like I was living on autopilot. And so I quit my job and my mom was like, all right, well, you you know, you got a year. You know, I saved money because I was helping pay rent and all that kind of stuff, help me pay bills. So she was like, you know, after a year, we'll see where you're at. So for a year, I just like, I was singing background. I was still doing open mics, getting paid for some stuff, doing demo work for producers. I did a lot of stuff for G-Unit, by the way. This is something that people don't know. <laughs> Come on, g <laughs> Okay, Amber, G-Unit, okay. The game. Like little like the game. riffs and stuff on different like songs. I did demos for them. So like when they needed a singer to come in and do the hook for something and demo the hook, when they needed ad-libs in the background. So there may be some G-Unit songs come that you're on, hearing. That. Push through. <laughs> for like everybody. <laughs> Wait, is that Amber? <laughs> right, no, legitimately. So I did a lot of demos. And then after that, the year was up and I was like, oh, well, nothing happened in this year. So I'm just going to go back to work. So I called Ikea to get my job back. And she was like, if you can commit to this for a year, then you can come back. And I I remember calling her and telling her, I don't know if I can commit for a year because I don't, you know, I'm not going to let my dream die, but I need a job. And she was like, well, if you can't commit for a year, then you can't come back. And literally, literally a week later, I got the call to do Glee. Literally a week later. You got the call to audition? Or you booked it? No, I got a call to audition for Glee a week later. In the most random way. It wasn't like I had an agent. I didn't have an agent. I didn't have like... Amber, get out! It was literally... My homeboy's friend's roommate was the assistant to the casting director, to Robert Ulrich. Her name is Amy. Ciao. That is- was his roommate. Yeah, his friend's roommate. And 
he asked him, like, do you know, like, a big chocolate girl that sings really, really big? And he was like, yeah. So he, my homeboy Jazir, like, reached out to me and was like, hey. And so um, he, he, when they approached me about it, they actually told me, like, he had the information wrong. He was like, I think it's some kind of reality show and they want you to sing on it. And, you know, reality shows were really new at that point. Like, it wasn't like a thing thing. So I just thought I was going to do, so they were like, just prepare a song. So when I went into the audition, I didn't know that it was like for a TV show. I was not aware. They only told me that I was, it was a singing audition. So I thought I was like either like singing to be a background singer on it or like, I didn't know if it was, I didn't know. So I just prepared to sing and they handed me sides when I got there and I was completely like, what? Had you been since acting I was a kid. before that? I was gonna say, had you been acting, Amber? Gosh, oh my goodness! I stopped oh my acting goodness. like at, at like sixteen. <laughs> I was twenty one. So then, how, so for- then, how did you end up getting cast as Mercedes? How did that end up happening? So, <laughs> so I got there. She she was like, "Oh yeah, you're um, you know, what's Keith's friend?" And um, thank you so much for coming in. She was like, sign in there. And I was like, okay. So I like signed in. And she was like, here, here are the sides. And I was like, okay. So I was like playing and cool. And so my mom was with me. And I was like, mom, I think I have to act. And I was like, so what? <laughs> who am I reading for? She was like, oh, you know, Mercedes. And I was like, oh, okay. She was like, do you have a headshot? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have my Ikea badge picture. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I said, you know, she's like, well, do you have something like online, like on your MySpace? Girl, MySpace, okay. I said, I have pictures on my MySpace. So she went on my MySpace. And this is, if I could find the picture, I'm going to post it one day. This was when I was like experimenting with makeup because I loved makeup. Girl, uh, white eyeshadow with the thickest winged black light. I look like a superhero. Like it was the worst <laughs> picture with this like deep swoop. Child, a mess, a mess. And she wow. printed that out. She printed that out as my hit shot. Amber, I am, this story is sending me. It's insane. And so I and ended up going in, I did the audition. I sang Sweet Thing, and Robert was like, um, well, do you think that maybe you could, no, it, it may be too much of a hard song. And I was like, well, what song, you know, did you want me to sing? Because the acting part was a, a dub. It, I was terrible. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no confidence at all. And he was like, well, can you sing? And I'm telling you, and I had never, uh, interestingly enough, I'd never considered myself a belter. I have a high voice. But I don't consider myself like a Jennifer Hudson belter. Like, that's a belt. That's a singer singer, you know? And so yeah. I never really considered myself to be that. And so they asked, he asked me to sing, and I'm telling you. And I was like, well, here goes nothing. I'm a <laughs> and like, I was shocked by what came out of my own mouth. I was like, wow, that didn't suck. And I sang it, I'm telling you. And he was like, oh my God, oh my God. And he started taking me around to all the casting directors in the in the building and made me sing for all of them. <gasps> yes, made me sing and I'm telling you for all of them. Called the producers, was like, I think I found her. We need to bring her in for the producer call. So I went in for the producer call, sang and I'm telling you, went in for the network call, did the did the test, chemistry test and all that kind of stuff. Amber. Yeah. This is and the, the rest is history. <laughs> I had no, and then you ended up being on one of the biggest television shows of all time. When I tell you, like, I read that script and was like, this is, this is, either people are going to get this or they're not, but this is special. And you don't always read stuff like that, but like, I was crying reading that script. Like, I saw myself reading that script. I was excited. I was like, there's nothing like this. And even when I met the rest of the cast, like, and it just goes to show you, people put a lot of things, p- people want to bet on people with a name or bet on people with credits. None of us had credits. We were all green. Green. I mean, besides like the Jane Lynch and Matthew Morris and Leah Michelle obviously had credits on Broadway. So, you know, but 
as far as like the TV world, all of us were very, very new. We were very new to this. Mm. And people, people need to start betting on talent. Yes. Because it, it's bet on people with talent. Wow. Betting on, well, we're going to get into that. We're going to, because you and I are always like talking about our frustrations with that. So we're going to get into that in a second. But I, I have to say, as you've been, as you were telling me the story, especially the beginning of the story, how, you know, the audition came from a friend of a friend and, you know, you walked into this not knowing what it was. I'm just thinking about how special that is. Had you known, you would have maybe doubted yourself before you even got in there. But you just went in thinking you were doing what you had just been doing willy-nilly, which is like, oh, people just want me to sing. I've been singing backup. I've been doing demo stuff. Like, I can do that. Like, you had to be green. You had mm-hmm. to be unassuming because sometimes we get in our own way. And you mm-hmm. you weren't able to get into your own way. And I think that that is a large part of how this came to be. And I just think that is so so, so, so beautiful and inspiring. And that's what, and you know what? Honestly, that's why I love the theme of your podcast because we can talk about loss in such a negative way sometimes, but sometimes loss is good because I lost control. I didn't have control over what was happening in that situation. And control is such a huge thing that I work through in therapy because you know, you grow, if you've grown up broke, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? And if you've grown up struggling, you don't always have control over, you you want control because when you finally get like financial stability or security or like you want, you always want to know what's happening next because you grew up never knowing what was going to happen. You know, I grew up and sometimes we didn't have hot water. I grew up sometimes I would come home and we didn't have lights. You know, I grew up in there may have been an eviction notice and now we got to figure out, you know, I had to, you know, listen to them, talk to the landlord about how, can I give you this much, this much? That's how I grew up. So there were, there was instability in, in, in some instances, which now have given me control issues. So anything good, I just want to hold on to it. But losing control, um, it can be such a great thing. And it was such a blessing to be in that situation and just rely on the natural gifts that God had given me and get out of my own way by trying to control it. Con- yeah. to control it when I was never going to be. And that's auditioning and being an actor anyway. You can't mm. control the outcome. We can't. We can't predict yeah. an outcome. The yeah. only thing that we can do is, is prepare how we're always preparing and then move forward. And had I known all of those things, I would have been so in my head. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then there were things outside of my control. Like the the story gets so the story gets so crazy. I almost didn't make it to to the producer audition because our car broke down, and I had to, in the middle of the freeway. I had to call my homeboy who gave us his car, Kelvin Truly. I'll always be grateful to him. <sighs> gave us a car, drove there, gave us a car so that I can even make it to audition and let us keep the car to drive it back and forth Mm -hmm. so that I could keep, you know what I'm saying? Because the, and, and, and then we thought the Volkswagen was, you know, we thought big, (laughs) big Sheila was, was pushing again. (laughs) And when I left, I remember this was the last audition, the network audition. And I finally got an agent in the middle of that process. And, um, we're like driving and the car starts to put, 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 put. So we're like, <laughs> oh, not again. Come on, Big Sheila. We pull over <laughs> on the side of the freeway and um, my agent calls and is like, hi, can I speak to Mercedes? And I'm so like out of it. No, that I'm just- Amber, no, Amber, I, we are getting off of this call. That is not what happened. You that get the actually- call that you got it when you were in the broken down Big Sheila literally the car is like putt putting on the side of the road and my mom's pulled over and I'm like all frustrated. And she's like, hi, can I speak to Mercedes? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You have the wrong number. Like about to, <laughs> <laughs> about to hang up. She's like, no, 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 Amber, you got it. You got it. And I just start screaming. My mom's like, what, what? Like, <laughs> I'm just like screaming and crying. I was like, I booked it. I booked it. Like, so overwhelmed with like 
did I really just step into my dreams right now? Oh, did I Ooh. honestly throughout all oh. that has been happening in the past two years? Did I like legitimately just step randomly? That's how, that's why you can't tell me that there is no God because that is not, that was so, everything was so orchestrated in the way that it was supposed to happen. Me being so green, me not really having the experience in auditioning in that way, everything is orchestrated and everything that I went through, the disappointments, the up and downs, the, Figuring out, you know, the being frustrated, the not understanding, even the spiritual work that I had, I had done during that year. I didn't really watch TV. You know what I'm saying? I was praying and journaling, praying and journaling, going to Bible study, going to church, talking to people about my dreams, praying with my mom, fasting, Mm. reading Mm. my word, like, and not even to get anything, just to gather understanding and a closeness and just have peace of mind because I just felt like I was just pining. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. The not knowing, but having peace in it. I'm in that space now. Not knowing, <sighs> but having... I don't know what's going to happen with my music. I have a new EP that's coming out. I don't know what's going to happen. But I have a peace about it. So what I want to know is, first of all, this is one of the most inspiring, beautiful, and amazing stories I have ever heard. And I'm so grateful that you're sharing it. What I want to know now is, so you're saying you're in a similar season now in your life. Absolutely. How do you, how are you keeping yourself lifted? Because you're older now. You're different now. You've had different experiences from the Amber that was in Big Sheila, right? Yes. That's getting a call <laughs> on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, you know? So it's, we've we've ascended, but we're yes. still trying to get somewhere. It, mm-hmm. What is your mind frame like? How do you keep yourself lifted? How do you give yourself grace when you don't have the, 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 the energy to do it? Child. What do you do? Child, it's been hard. Th- a therapy has been teaching me a lot about myself. I'm a huge advocate for therapy. I will say it. Everyone needs to be in therapy because we all have things mm. that we need to talk about. You know what I'm saying? We all have things that where we need a, a an outside perspective, somebody that has no skin in the game whatsoever to tell us and help us work through our mess and be able to be completely open and naked and with with invulnerable with another person, right? So. One thing that I've realized, I'll say this. One thing that I've realized that I have stopped doing, Glee was such a pinnacle. I lived the life of a rock star, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I lived the life of a rock star. I was on private jets. Mm. I could buy what I wanted. I can vacation when I wanted. I was flying all over the world, staying in five-star hotels, eating in Michelin star restaurants. Like I lived the life of a rock star and I had been chasing that high ever since. Mm, mm, Amber. And I had to stop. Mm. And this is a recent discovery that I had. I was talking to another one of my actor friends and she said, she literally was like, you know, I've just been chasing a high. And I was like, Light bulb, that's what I've been doing. Mm. Instead of appreciating the work that I'm doing and the journey that I'm taking, I'm chasing that feeling again. And doing, I'm a different person. I'm a different girl. I'm at a different level. Why am I chasing something in the past? Mm. Never, it may never feel like that again. And that's okay. Because that thing was new. It was a shock. I was bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Now we're walking into purpose. Now we're walking into contentment. People, people, people want to chase a high and they want an adrenaline rush all the time, but everyone underestimates being content. Mm. You don't know how to- Ooh, talk to me about con- what is content? <sighs> content. What is content, Amber? How do you how do you describe contentment? I, I think for me, it's it's being satisfied with where where you are. 
It's not perpetual happiness or joy. It's 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 being okay with not having highs all the time. You don't have to have highs mm. all the time. And 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 it's also being kind and gentle to yourself when you have lows. It's it's and it's okay with being bored. We are so not good yeah. at being bored. <laughs> We're not good at being still. We're hustle, 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 hustle. Especially in the acting business where people like people around that are outside make you feel like a failure when you're not popping. When you're not your your success is wrapped up in how often you're booking, how much you're doing. Yes, yes, very difficult. Really is, and and we take that on as actors and entertainers. Like that's why so many go broke because they wanna they wanna floss and flash and like you know what I'm saying. And instead of being content with what it is that you have, contentment is just that's that's my goal. Getting into my purpose and writing that out the rest of my life and being content. And I really am working on it because chasing that high, Mm. it'll have you miserable. Yeah. You know, I know Glee was such a big moment for you and a big moment for all of you. But as a cast, you all have been through a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. A lot, Amber. A lot of loss. And, you know, being having been on a TV show, no matter the ups and downs, you're a family. It's family. Yeah. It's almost, I don't even know how to fully explain how much time you spend with these people, how many memories you make, how many, you know, and even more than the memories, you're in TV history together for mm-hmm. the rest of, of you know, connected forever. forever. The show has You're been connected off. forever. We're going to be connected for the rest of our lives. If one person does something, I'm always going to know about it because people just automatically put us together. And like, the thing yeah. about it is also what people have to realize: like, we did something that is new, was very new. It was revolutionary. So everything that we, even behind the scenes, was created. There was no musical show. We literally did musical theater for television. So we had to do Mm -hmm. the musical theater stuff, the prep stuff. That's the dance rehearsals, the training, the recording, the the having vocal rehearsals to learn to harmonize and sing together. And then we had to do the TV stuff. We had to film. Mm. We spent an immense amount of time off of a set together. And the only yeah. ones that understood the experience were one another. I can't talk to another actor about it because they're not even going to understand what it is that I'm going through because I don't sleep. But it's because mm-hmm. I'm spending time outside of this <laughs> working also. I saw them more than I saw my own family because we were yeah. also going on tours. So we yeah. developed a, a closeness um, that <laughs> part of it probably was a trauma bond to be honest. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, some of it is. It's it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. It looks so like, glamorous, but there's so many difficult things you go through that you go through together yes. as a cast that nobody exactly. will understand except for yeah. you all. Yeah, like we had a we had like experiencing losses together. You know what I'm saying and coming yeah. together like you they're like your siblings. You know what I'm saying and you lost a sibling. It's I, yeah. it's not I lost my castmate, I lost a sibling. Even if it's a sibling I didn't mm. talk to every single day. You know what I'm saying? That's still, you know, when Corey passed away, I, I had never experienced a loss like that in my life. Wow. I, and like I've had yeah. family members pass away, but that was like losing a sibling. Mm. When mm. Naya passed away, that that was like losing a sister, like legit. Like we used to talk about what kind of moms we were going to be on set. She's exactly mm. the kind of mom that she wanted to be. I got to see her turn into that. Oh, Amber. And Jenna's wow. having a baby. I get to see her turn into a, a mom. Leah had a baby. I got to see her turn into a mom. You know what I'm mm. saying? Even the tragedy around everything that happened with Mark. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 hard to to deal with. 
because that still was somebody that I considered a sibling. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And it was so much, there's so much controversy around that, you know, and we had to do it in front of everyone. Yeah. We had to deal with that in front of everyone. And there's a certain feeling of entitlement that people have to us because they feel like they know us. We were in there, we were on their screens every week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And talking about things that changed people's lives. That show changed yeah. people's lives. It changed mine. It made me, it, I, I was able to see what was possible. I was yeah. able, it was, a, it was a visual representation of what was possible for me on TV. Yeah. What did experiencing such shocking tragedy multiple times, how, what did it teach you about life? What did it teach you? That is very precious. And you don't know how long your time is going to be here on this earth. And you have to tell people the way that you feel. Um, It also just taught me that everyone is fighting a silent battle that you don't know about. So be kind to people. Yeah. Just be kind. It it costs nothing to be kind. It doesn't, you know, and I understand we're all adults and we have things that we have that we're going through in our own lives. But like, if you think about somebody, just shoot them a text. Mm-hmm. Takes a second. Hey, I think I was thinking about you. I love you. I have a friend of mine that was um, we're super super close now, and she told me, you know, Amber, I didn't deserve your your friendship years ago, um, because she was wilding. <laughs> she was like, I didn't deserve your friendship years ago. But she said, you know what? Out of the blue, even though I was like, she kind of like to the left of me, like disappeared. She said, out of the blue one day. You called me and was like, hey, I just thought about you and I just wanted to say I love you and um, I hope that you're doing okay. I didn't want to bother you. I just wanted to call you and say that. And she she said that moment saved her life. Mm. As somebody, somebody that she hadn't talked to that she wasn't doing anything for cared about her and it let her feel valuable. Wow. And honestly, she's that for me now. Hmm. She sent me flowers yesterday. I had a hard day yesterday. She sent me the most yeah. beautiful flower bouquet with the most amazing note. And I just mm. literally stood there at my door bawling, crying. Because I, she she returned that love to me. And I needed it mm. in that moment. She didn't even know. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Amber, you're that for me. You know, somehow you're always there. You always know. You always check in. And that is rare. And as you said, it is valuable. So I want you to know that I value you. I see you. I respect you. I honor you. And I really, really, really love you, Amber. So I just want to say thank you for coming. (laughs) I'm so happy we had this conversation. Thank you. Before we go, though, Amber, I want to know, what is your takeaway from our conversation? Um, Honestly, I'm so grateful that you had me tell that story about Mm. how Glee happened for me. Because if God can do it once, he can do it again. And like I said, it's, it's not about chasing that adrenaline high. It's more about now understanding my purpose. Um in life, which is to help, which is just, just to help and just to be there for people, whether it be an example or the girls that I mentor or the jobs that I'm hoping to give to people that I feel like are talented and deserve it to be in that Mm. position. So I'm really taking away to just keep going. Mm. And then it's going to happen for me. Yeah. And you know, that's beautiful. And my takeaway is that is the reminder that friendship can save lives. Friendship, community is is and can be life-saving and life-changing. And that is, and to be cherished and to hold on to dearly. Thank you, Amber. I love you, sis. Thank you, Ashley. (laughs) 
After the credits, Amber tells us why we're making one of our most prolific thinkers from history proud. Thank you so much for listening. This podcast is produced by LWC Studios for OWN. The show's executive producer is Juleka Lentigua. Its senior editor is Verilyn Williams. Sound designer is Cedric Wilson. Managing producers are Camille Stennis and Paulina Velasco. Assistant producers are Michelle Baker and Shanice Tyndall. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, and we hope you do, please make sure to subscribe, leave a rating, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts to ensure you hear the next one. Okay, Amber, if you could bring one person back from history to see the progress that Black women have made today, who would that be and why? (laughs) Oh my God, this is such a good question. I would say James Baldwin. (gasps) Amber, that's a brilliant answer. I would love, because I'm really into, I've been reading like his books right now and, and watching videos and talks or whatever. I would love to walk around with him and just be like, look, Look at these, this movement. Look at social media. Look at the Supreme Court. <laughs> Amber, that's right there. good. That's lit. It's because of you, by the way. <laughs> James Baldwin would get would his life. He would, he would get would his life. Oh, my goodness, Amber. That's brilliant. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be really proud of us. I think he really would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>